it looks like my dream is coming true. We are slowly but surely taking over Louisville, Kentucky, guys, here with Polk's command and trying to bring Kentucky into the fold of the South. Now, I don't think that's exactly going to be easy because I know for sure that while there is no real army of Kentucky to speak of, except for militia bands that we don't really face in this game, we do, however, have troops over here um, in Indiana. And actually, I believe that these guys are going to be able to possibly go over here and stop us from advancing into Indiana, possibly even attack us at Louisville. But the goal right now, man, is to take that city. You can see us slowly taking it. It's um, it's going to take a while, though, that's for sure. Um, there's just no way we're going to capture that easily. I've also restructured or begun restructuring some of the armies over here. I want to give you guys a look. But one thing that's got me worried is that the Army of Northeastern Virginia is on the move. Definitely seen the move, and uh, that has me very worried. If we take a look over here, I've actually separated some of the units. I think I'll separate them further here. We're not done with the micromanaging. Um, but essentially, just go ahead and bring these units over and have them in separate commands. I hope this is the right approach. I'd like to think it is. Um, uh, let's bring Cheatham's Brigade over. We've already got quite a lot of cavalry in that brigade. And we're, of course, awaiting the Union. But like I said, I saw that army on the move and it's got me worried. And I'm starting to think, well, what do I do? Do I bring over the Army of the Potomac? I'm not so sure that's the right idea either. So let's just keep our eye on them for now. Uh, maybe it's just my imagination and we'll kind of hold for a bit. And I'm going to do everything I can to get the army of the Shenandoah stronger. Um, we have, of course, selected the policies here. And I want to give a real, real special thanks uh, to just everybody in the community for uh, giving us some advice here on what to approach with. So we've gone for the Militia Act 2, which lengthens the militia time. We've also gone for Military 2. Of course, this is going to take about a year to pass, a little more than a year as a matter of fact. I um, mean, we're almost done with the Federals Act, but this doesn't necessarily, excuse me, the Regulars Act, getting a little tired here, but this doesn't necessarily increase recruitment. Um, the other policies actually do increase recruitment. We've also stuck to King Cotton, and this strengthens the agricultural effort to increase the production of farms and plantations, and uh, looks like it's going to be um, also improving our relations with Europe. So potentially getting the Europeans to join the war. At least we hope so anyway. All right, let's go ahead. Union calls for volunteers. Two-year contracts. So they have um, registered their two-year contracts here. We're, doing, we're trying to do the same thing currently with our militia um, focus here. Sanctions further enlistment. All right, well, that's good for the Union. Uh, not great for us, I don't think. But again, I just want to focus on the army of the Shenandoah. Not sure we necessarily are going to be getting reinforcements here anytime soon. Um, but let's just pause over here. Take a look. Why am I going all the way to this screen? Uh, take a look over here. I'm going to try to add to Johnston's unit here. And it looks like we do have enough units, in, enough men in Tennessee, I believe, to get an infantry brigade. Just good old-fashioned. Maybe we need to wait for a few more. Yeah, I think we've got to wait for a few more units. Um, somebody mentioned, even though we have 2,500 here... Um, we need a few hundred more because let's say one of the guys gets killed or wounded, well then we need a replacement to be able to come in and, uh, you know, take up arms in his stead. So in the meantime, not much I'm going to do with the army of the Shenandoah. Kind of tempted to grab this army of the Northwest. It's not really doing anything over here and just swinging it over here to join up with the army of the Shenandoah. Um, and, you know, to help defend it if things get pretty bad. But I'm not sure a thousand men is going to make much of a difference. So in this case, I'm just going to kind of wait. And if I see that army of northeastern Virginia start moving, well, then I will absolutely consider bringing over the army of the Potomac. Um, they've got over 30,000 men in that army. So there's just, as far as I can tell, no way that Johnston can stand up to them. He could, of course, deal a fatal blow, just a lethal blow to these guys um, and make their position so untenable that they'll never, ever... Uh, want to move deeper into the south again, but I hope it doesn't come to that, frankly. I really do. McCullough at the destination. Yeah, I believe that's over here. That's going to be our western armies. Yeah, we really am not so sure what to do with those western armies, to be honest with you. Uh, the reason being they're not exactly very large. There's like a few thousand men in it. Uh, let's take a look here. Yep, Benjamin McCullough, sure enough. So what I'm going to do is... Get right there on the border. Let's do that. In fact, I shouldn't even go here. I should go straight to Carlton. 
And the reason being, we can actually get some supplies here, I believe. Nothing special, though. And let's do the same with um, the Missouri State Guard as well. I think we need to start putting these guys to use, even if it means just capturing some forts um, or something along those lines. There are still a lot of forts that we can capture here in these Western territories without ri raising too much suspicion. So that's exactly where I'm headed. Let's get up there with Price as well. Although given our, you know, being the pretty early stage of the war, I don't exactly feel too comfortable um, adding troops to Price's army right now. We need our troops for the east. Okay, let's get back to Louisville. Let's see what's going on here. That army of the Indiana's got me worried, man. All right, so interestingly enough, we are halfway through taking the city here, but let's see what that army's looking like. 27,000 men. Yeah, that's not something we could beat, especially not with a commander like Polk. Not nearly as skilled, I don't think, as, as Robert E. Lee or many of the other Confederate generals. Um, so if this guy starts moving, we've got something to got something to worry about for sure. Of course, for them to get to Louisville in time um, to stop this uh, siege from happening, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to be able to take the city, but one of the, th the things we might want to do is take the city and just get the hell out of here. Again, I also want to keep my eye on the Army of Northeastern Virginia. We know the Union's going to have to attack eventually. Um, just There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's two days going right there. Let's get back to uh, Lovell. Polk's command is starting to take some damage here. Um, taking some casualties, just being out here in the elements for sure and not getting supply. Come on now, come on, give me that city. I want to I want to take a look over here at this army again. I'm just keeping an eye on both armies to make absolutely sure that that um, army of the Northeast... Oh, I think... Are, maybe I'm seeing things. No, I think they're... I don't think they're moving. I don't think they're moving. We, we might be okay. Just getting a little bit um, nervous with such a large army on the move here. Is it possible that we can add additional troops? I think we have to wait until the end of the month. And obviously we have to wait for some of those acts to pass um, before we're able to get additional amounts of volunteers. It wouldn't be such a bad idea actually to go ahead and just get... Um, you know, maybe another artillery uh, group or another um, cavalry group, but I'm really going for that infantry, so I am just going to wait a little bit longer. Maybe we could go for Grafton, Virginia. Doesn't look like anybody's really defending it. With just a thousand men. I think it's a bit of a risk. I'm, I'm kind of concerned, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments that I'm playing sort of the Confederate McClellan right now, um, and that I'm just not being aggressive enough. I'm trying to be a little more aggressive here in the West for sure, um, but also just, uh, you know, attempting to be aggressive elsewhere, and I'm not exactly sure if that's the correct approach. Again, I did go for, Kentucky, for the capital of Kentucky here, so that's pretty good, I think, um, but maybe we need to go ahead and be the first to strike in the East. We were doing great in those initial turns, really kicking the Union's ass. Maybe we need to go back and take another risk. Even if it means getting an army in a pretty nasty spot, uh, it might be better to be on the offensive um, instead of on the defensive. And of course, you know, having to fight massive Union armies that are eventually going to bust on through. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, I think. I think, just barely. Pretty sure that in the morning we will get news about whether or not Louisville was taken. And this would be, yes, there we go, guys. Kentucky secedes. A new state in the Confederacy. Union heartlands are threatened. Confederate armies are triumphant. And the blue grass turned gray. I love that. So very, very interesting stuff there. Of course, we're going to be enacting rebel laws in that part of the country now and i'm not sure i want to leave polk there to be gobbled up by the army of the indiana i'm not even sure polk's going to be getting any real um any real um supply or anything let's see provisions 28 percent yeah not much um if provisions run low rations are regulated although it does look like this is growing yeah it's definitely growing so i think just remaining at this location now that it's under our control it seems that um 
we are now actually getting supply to Lovel. What I don't like, though, is that clock is running a little too fast for my liking. Anything could happen in that time period. But I still don't see any movement from the Army of Northeastern Virginia. So I'm thinking, guys, I'm really thinking that I want to just take um, good old Johnston again. I mean, he was successful the first time. And go raiding. Like, maybe go to Frederick, or maybe even go all the way to Harrisburg. Uh, or maybe just lie and wait and kind of see if um, if the Union will start moving. I know that eventually, every time I've played this campaign, you know, and not recorded it, let's say, I know that eventually he's going to either go across here, or he's going to go around through Cumberland and come across this way and attack us at Winchester. That's almost certain. Um, so now I'm kind of just trying to decide, well, when is that going to happen? And what do we need to do when that happens to respond properly? I'm really considering getting maybe just one more um, cavalry unit. I mean, you can never have too many cavalry, right? And maybe we'll get this one from West Virginia, although I think the best thing to do is just kind of wait um, for those infantry replacements to arrive, or the, excuse me, those additional um, volunteers to arrive, and they will be trickling in. They will be trickling in. So soon we will be able to hire um, another infantry unit, but keep in mind, even when that happens, it takes a few days. I think um, these guys, it took 11 days for those infantry to even arrive. Of course, they're going to get some very rudimentary training um, as volunteers, but pretty much you're still going to be waiting no matter what. So we need to be prepared for any eventuality. But man, my raider side is really making me, tempting me to go out and maybe even take Cumberland here, um, Cumberland, Maryland, and then head back to the lines. Of course, that leaves the area open, but uh, what do you guys think? So actually, guys, it looks like Johnston's army, as you can see here, he needs cavalry anyway. So why not? Let's just go ahead and grab some cavalry. Um, I'd rather take it from one of the states that can't potentially get us an infantry unit, but we'll still go for West Virginia. So let's go for West Virginia Cavalry Brigade. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Maybe we are going to have to go to Tennessee after all. I wonder why we wouldn't be able to recruit this time, because last time we absolutely had enough volunteers for cavalry. Oh, that's because we're not selecting a cavalry unit. There we go. All right, you know what? For the West Virginia cavalry, they're a new state. Let's give them some tannish gray and some white trousers. I think that's pretty sporting for the time. Don't don't question my, my clothing sense, folks. Um, but again, that means taking troops from Tennessee. Although, again, we do, you know, we really do need this brigade, so it's worth doing. Let's go for it. Some good old Tennessee troops there under Frost. Now, again, even in this situation, we're still going to have to wait for those troops to arrive. And to get an exact um, arrival time, so actually, as you can see, it could be 30 days, could be up to a month for these troops to get here. We simply can't rely on just those guys to win the war. That's not going to happen. So if we get attacked, we need to be prepared for that. Now, that army of the Indiana's got me worried. Um, although Polk's command, as you can see now, he's getting pretty regular supply. Um, I'm going to leave him there. If I see any movement from that other army, I'll absolutely move forward. Got the Missouri State Guard here, and we're just going to bring up McCullough's force, and we are just going to go ahead and head out, um, start attacking them in the west, even if it means hitting them over here as much as we can um, in Missouri. I like how it's the army of the Mississippi, but it's, it's actually Missouri here. Um, maybe take Carthage, maybe even go farther west and take additional areas. But I know for sure that no matter how dangerous it is, we need to be a little more adventurous with these armies in the west. If you guys haven't noticed, I am jumping forward a few days in-game, um, in between episodes. Just because if we were to play every single second of the game, uh, it would take forever. But look at that, I saw the army of northeastern Virginia was absolutely moving, guys. 100%. Um, I'm gonna take the army of the Potomac. I am going to try and get there as quickly as possible, guys. This is pretty insane. Um, if it needs to be rail movement, so be it. And whatever he needs to get there quickly. But for sure, um, the opposing army is moving. Let's see, the Department of Pennsylvania here still has 13,000 troops. But we need to do whatever we can to go ahead and assist our boys uh, over here, man. The army of the Shenandoah. Things are about to get quite interesting. To speed up time but i know even that's pretty dangerous so get there get there man he's going as quickly as he can he's going as quickly as we can we don't know how long it's going to take them to actually get here and of course if they want to man they could stab us in the back right now and smash the army of the Shen shenandoah before the army of the potomac even gets here 
and these are like our two main armies look at that so we have to win man we've got to win this fight um look at that talk about like building up to a massive situation that's a previous battle Thirty-one thousand guys so we've got 16,000 here we've hopefully got 25,000 arriving man keep your fingers crossed this is going to be ridiculous i don't even know if i set myself up um for a proper battle here <laughs> Well, behold a pale horse, my friends. Here we go, the true Riders of Death approaching. And this right here, I believe, is the first major battle. Absolutely going to be the first major battle uh, for the Confederacy and the Union here. First major battle of the Civil War, let's face it. Um, and it looks like they have reinforcements arriving, man. This is going to be massive. We've got 31,000 here. We've got 8,000 here. That's 39,000 men total. I mean, 16,000, and my math is awful, so I'll probably need to, need to actually do these calculations. Uh, 16,000, 25,000 plus 16,000. We're at 50K, I believe. No, nowhere close to 50K. Do you see what I'm talking about? Um, so 35 plus 6, 41,000 about, let's call it 42,000 against, yeah, about 49,000 men. I'm pretty sure I'm correct on my calculations. I'm probably not. But man, I want to see what this builds up to here. And here we go, guys. Holy crap. Um, 39,000 men against 32,000. Yeah, that really puts things into perspective. Let's play this battle, brothers. I'm sorry, guys. I knew that um, when we're loading into the battle, for whatever reason, the audio clips out. But the reason I wanted to thank you and apologize, well, thank you for following the series and supporting and apologize is I know you're going to have to wait till next episode to watch this battle. So just remember to always, man, hit that like, hit that comment, hit that um, subscribe button if you're new. But we're going to get set up, my friends. And I think the, the setup is going to have to happen here near Kernstown. Um, almost for sure. I don't want that formation. I want successive lines. There we go. In fact, double lines would be even better. There we go, guys. Um, let's take a look. So it looks like they're going to be leaving Winchester. They're going to have to cross what looks to be this Toll House area. So I think we're going to hang out here on the Toll House Road and prepare for them. We'll have Beauregard, of course, um, standing here in supply. Actually, we could probably have Beauregard go ahead and line up on the Kernstown Road as well over here by the toll house and sort of arrive as needed. I like the fact that we're kind of hiding him in the woods here. Um, of course, if the enemy ends up swinging through from the east, we're going to be in a pretty tough spot. So I think what I'll do just to be absolutely certain is I'll take Walker over here. He is, of course, under command of Beauregard. So he's going to be a little farther from his um, general or his particular main general, let's say. Um, but I think having this situation or this this army like this is going to make for pretty nice. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Don't you worry about it. There we go. <laughs> it's going to make for a pretty nice um, defensive situation. I hope so anyway, guys. We are hitting the play button right there. And I'm almost certain either way this battle was going to take, uh, was going to go into the next morning. There's just no other if, there, there's no other real, eh, real way about it. Um, because as you can see, it's already going to be nighttime here. So we're pretty much just waiting for the enemy to arrive. But this battle of Winchester is going to be the deciding battle of the initial start of the war. There's no doubt about it, man. This puts our other fights to shame. Thank you so much for the support. You know what you got to do to get this episode up soon. So share with your friends. Get it out there. Let's get this battle up because I want to play. Take care, folks. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next one.